I have been a type 1 diabetic for over 20 years now. And today is my 62nd day that I haven't had any insulin. That means no short acting and no long acting insulin. So I'm gonna show you what my blood sugar is first thing in the morning and after each meal or before the next meal, let's just say, cause you shouldn't test your blood sugar right after a meal because it's gonna be high. And the exercises I do to keep my blood sugar lower and at the end of the video, I'm going to explain why I'm doing this. So for breakfast today, I decided to make a smoothie. I don't have the same thing every day. So I have, this is what it is. It's a chocolate mint smoothie. I don't even know if I would call it a smoothie. It's more like just a protein drink. I've got one half of a frozen banana so i have three of these these particular they're like one inch pieces of frozen banana i've got two teaspoons of flaxseed that i ground i put in these cacao nibs so it's bitter chocolate and it has no added green ingredients it's just a hundred percent chocolate and it's high in fat and super healthy and high in magnesium. So I put two teaspoons inside and I ground that and then I sprinkled some on top for some delicious crunch. And then I've got these chia seeds that I put those in there as well. They are a great source of omega-3s to give it some sweetness without any carbs or calories. I used monk fruit this new naturals brand and i just used a little scoop in there it's very small and just made it level otherwise if you use too much monk fruit it can be very bitter and taste it just ruin your meals it tastes terrible so you have to be very careful when you're using monk fruit use the smallest amount possible and then i also used one drop of peppermint and this is peppermint oil and then I used a pea protein powder, just plain. If you have vanilla, great. I just haven't found one I like. And then I just had seven walnuts. You should try to eat as many raw nuts as possible. Even if they're toasted and they don't have oil in it, it's better still to have it raw. And I do not have any oil. oil increases inflammation what i do also every morning to make sure i'm hydrated enough throughout the day so i am on a very low carb high fat vegan diet and so it's very easy to get dehydrated so what i do is i'm i fill this up about to here which is 90 ounces and i make sure that i'm drinking that throughout the day in the morning, I take specific supplements. I have a multivitamin. I take a vitamin D3. Now we can't get very much vitamin D3 from our diet as vegans because we don't eat animal sources. The only sources of vitamin D3 are vitamins, sun, and mushrooms. And I hate mushrooms, so <laughs> I have to take this. And then I also take chlorella. So this is different than spirulina. Chlorella does remove the heavy metals from your body. So even if we eat super clean, heavy metals are in all of our foods, even the healthiest foods, even if it's organic. So I take this every day. Now, spirulina is, the problem with that is that it's highly contaminated because it absorbs all the toxic chemicals that are dumped into the ocean. So I no longer take spirulina. Luckily, I only when I was taking it, I took it only for a short period of time. But when you have your vitamins, make sure that you read all of them just to make sure they don't have that added. So I was taking a multi and I was shocked when I found that it did have spirulina. So I threw that away and got a different one. 
after I got my blood results, I found out that I was anemic. So if you're anemic, you need to take iron supplements. If you're not anemic or you don't have low iron, do not take iron because it can build up in the body. I'm showing you this brand because I tried several brands and I even tried the liquid ones and those hurt my stomach a lot, but this one doesn't hurt my stomach at all. So I just take it an hour before eating, after I get up, and it has vitamin C in it so you don't have to eat an orange or any anything with vitamin C in it, which is nice because if you're diabetic, that means you'd have your blood sugar go up if you're eating a tangerine or something like that. So this is a brand that I use and I'll link it below. I keep track of what I eat and my blood sugar level. So here's everything that I ate this morning so far. And then at the end of the day, I'll log it onto the chronometer to make sure I got all my nutrients. I already ate my meal, now I need to burn off those carbs since I don't have any insulin. So I, what I do is I time my workouts to make sure I work out a certain amount of time. So I'm gonna time my workout for 30 minutes because I know I need to exercise at least for 30 minutes to burn off that little half a banana. I'm excessively thirsty right now. So for me, that means my blood sugar is going up. So I'm going to work out right away and start kind of hard and I'm drinking mint tea. I try not to have caffeine, even caffeinated tea because that makes my blood sugar go higher. For the exercises I'm going to start with are the ones my physical therapist gave me for my neuropathy. Today is chest and back today. So I'm gonna do these exercises in addition to the ones that my physical therapist gave me. I exercised for an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, it went away, but my number was 153. Oh, darn it. That's pretty crazy. I exercised with weights and I only ate 15 grams of carbs and my blood sugar still went I'm going to eat my lunch right now. And so what this is, it's cauliflower, cabbage, and miso that I sauteed. And then I have nutritional yeast on top. That's my healthy cheese. And this is a great, great source of B12. And as, di as, as not, not diabetics, but as vegans, we don't get B12 because you can only get that in meat. So you can either get vitamins or this, or both, I love this. And then I have topped it with this delicious umbashi. And this is got sesame seeds and spices and salt. It, it's really, really delicious. So I am not gonna have this much of the apple because my blood sugar is high and actually I really can't have a whole apple if I'm not on insulin, it will just spike it. So. I'll have two of these slices and then I will also have, this is TVP and it, it is from soy and we've got onions and spices and chopped green bell pepper and a type of soy sauce called coconut aminos and this is baked and it tastes like ground beef without the fat or cholesterol, it's high in protein. It is delicious. So I'm gonna have to have my husband make this and, and record it because it is just so tasty. All right, so I'm gonna go eat and then after I eat, I'm gonna do some more exercise. I gotta bring my blood sugar back down. In between workouts, I work. I do have a job, I work on contracts and I get paid at the end of the contract so I work early in the mornings, on the weekends. Anytime I'm not exercising, I'm working too. I'm training my client. She's a senior citizen. I am a certified personal trainer and strength and conditioning coach.
and I train my clients virtually right now due to COVID and I modify each workout based on the client's abilities. I'm eating my last meal of the day, my third meal, this is my dinner. It's got cauliflower Brussels sprouts, red bell pepper, Kalmata olives, a little bit of chickpeas, and no oil. I don't need oil because it causes inflammation, it's unnecessary calorie. Vegan diets are not just good for type 2 diabetics, but also excellent for type 1 diabetics. You can go on YouTube and do a search and you'll find other type one diabetics who have tried vegan diets and they've had to lower their insulin. So these are the supplements I take after my last meal of the day. This is turmeric. It helps with inflammation. Iodine comes from fish or iodized salt. So that's why vegans typically have to take iodine. But if you're taking a multivitamin, double check to see if it has iodine because you don't wanna take too much of it. The other supplement I take is a B complex. If you're a vegan, you definitely want to take a B12 vitamin. And lastly, for me, this one is the most important, calcium and magnesium. I've actually had to take this my entire life because I was born with a severe dairy allergy. So I've never been able to eat milk, cheese, dairy of any time without vomiting it up. <laughs> so if I don't take calcium, and it should come with magnesium in it, it's a combo, they work together, then I notice that my nails start to weaken and to chip. What I love about calcium is that my nails grow really long. I have to trim them every two weeks. These are natural and my hair grows really long and really fast. So this is probably something that every person who doesn't eat dairy should have. But a note regarding supplements, you don't wanna take any supplements that you don't need. And not all supplements work. You wanna get most of your nutrients from real food. But if you're a vegan, the two that you definitely want is D3 and B12. And I definitely think that all vegans should also have calcium but get a complete blood workup to find out if you're deficient in anything. If you are not deficient, a vitamin supplement or a mineral supplement will not help you at all. It's a complete waste of money and too much of certain supplements can actually be dangerous and toxic to your body. I wrote down everything that I ate for today. So I'm logged into the chronometer. You can access this on the computer like I'm doing right now or on your phone. And I listed all the foods I ate today. And if you look at these, it looks like, oh my gosh. I've eaten so many different things and you should, you should definitely eat a variety of foods every single day as much as possible within the range of your calorie recommended intake because the more foods you eat, the more diversity is in your gut and the more gut diversity, the more your body will be able to heal you with all the different dietary fibers. So I'm gonna go right down to how many calories I ate. It's 1,440 calories. And here it says I burned, since I did exercise of 
2 hours and 45 minutes, 1,728 calories. But I tell my clients, do not put your exercise into your app unless that motivates you because the amount of calories they typically tell you that you burn are usually overstated. So let's go to the macronutrient targets. So your macros are your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. So right here it says, I ate 1,440 calories and my goal is 1,400 and I've exceeded that maximum by 2%. Now you can change these targets. Protein here it says I've exceeded it by 4% and I did change this originally. It had my recommended protein intake of 101.4 grams of protein per day. The dietary reference intake is just 0.36 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So I weigh 97 pounds. So I take 97 times 0.36 equals 35 grams of protein required per day for me. That's the minimum requirement. We don't want to meet the minimum requirements. We want the optimal amount. Per ACSM, the American College of Sports Medicine, which is a reputable accredited organization for fitness professionals, which is based on scientific research states that a person that lifts weights or trains regularly should eat one half to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight every day. For my current weight of 97 pounds, I should eat between 49 to 78 grams of protein daily. I'd rather err on the higher side of the range to ensure I'm building muscle instead of maintaining or worse, losing muscle. Some people eat only one meal a day, but there's only 20 to 35 grams of protein that can be absorbed at one time, which is why you want to eat three times a day and spread out your protein intake between each of those meals. A feature that I love about this chronometer app is the nutrient breakdown which I haven't seen in some of the other apps. So it lets me know how much fiber I ate. Look, 156% of my recommended intake of fiber. So congrats to me. I have not eaten enough food that contain calcium. So a couple ways to rectify this. One, I do take a calcium supplement, but of course it's better to get your nutrients from real food. So a couple things I can do there. I can eat more calories and or I can eat more tofu. If I was eating a balanced diet, my fat intake would be a lot lower. The recommended percentage of dietary fat from your diet is supposed to be between 20 to 35 percent. So my max should be 62 grams of carbs. But since I'm doing this specific diet for a specific reason, which I will talk to you about shortly, this is actually the way I planned it. So this app can show you where you need to make some corrections. So I've looked at my sodium intake and I'll click on this and then it highlights this. So it tells me where my highest sources of salt are coming from. So my 10 Kalmata olives are a whopping 520 milligrams of salt. I know and have known that, that olives are very salty, but I had no idea I was eating so many milligrams of salt. So after learning this, I'm going to eat very few olives. It's just not worth it. And my pea protein, I was actually very surprised to learn that it was so high in salt because there's no salt listed on the package of the pea protein that I eat. 
a lot of pea protein companies use a wet fractionation method where the peas are soaked in a salt solution to obtain an alkaline level to extract the pea protein. The other top sources of salt came from the seasoning called yumbashi. So I'm going to make sure to measure that out so I don't have too much of that. And coconut aminos, which is a type of soy sauce but without soy, has a lot of salt in it as well. So now that I know this, I know how to cut down my salt intake. I was happily surprised that my potassium was as high as it is. Now it is not optimal. I'm only at 87%. I want it at 100%. And I figured it would be lower because I am eating low carbs, so I can't have as many high carb vegetables and fruits that I would like, such as sweet potatoes. So if I click on this, it will tell me my sources of potassium. I was surprised to find that my TVP, with my soy protein, has a lot of potassium and the broccoli. So on my food worksheet, I also estimate the net grams and I estimated for the day 47 grams of net carbs. So let's see how I did in reality. But I actually ate 65 grams of carbs. So I was definitely not on target. That's okay. That's probably why I had to exercise as much as I did to keep my blood sugar down. Good morning. This is my blood sugar, 90. So pretty good. So I'm happy about that. And it has now been over eight weeks since I've been without insulin. I'm no longer taking my insulin because I can't. It has damaged my nerves. There is a ingredient in the insulins that are injectable called phenols and those cause nerve damage. And that's what it's done to me. It's damaged my nerves. My hair has been falling out. The skin under my lip has turned into a horrible rash and burns and my fingers and my toes swell and burn. I can't type. Just clicking on the, my mouse is painful. I have to lay down several times a day and put ice packs on my feet. I can't sleep at night unless I'm wearing ice mittens on my fingers and my toes. I can no longer stand salt. I can't be in the sun. If I'm in the sun for just a minute, even if it's just my stomach, my cheeks turn bright red and my toes and my fingers start burning. It feels like my toes and my fingers are about to explode. There have been several times I thought I was going to end up in the ER and I called my doctors and they told me to go to the emergency room, but I thought I don't want to get COVID. In addition, I can't eat spicy food, I have to take really short showers because showers are extremely painful. So when I stop taking the insulin, a lot of those problems go away. The burning stops, I can eat spicy food, I can lay out in the sun, I can walk, I can function, I can go to work. The, I do still have damage, I have peripheral neuropathy, caused from the nerve damage from these phenols. It's no surprise that 50% of diabetics end up with nerve damage if the preservative in the insulin they're taking causes nerve damage. So I am waiting right now to get approval from my insurance company for an inhalable insulin, and they've denied it several times, and I'm just hoping that I can take it because what I'm doing is pretty unsustainable. It's very difficult. It's frustrating. It, exercising three or more. I've exercised sometimes five hours a day just to eat food is really stressful and it's really hard. And I'm not eating enough. That's why I'm doing this diet right now. And 
why I'm not taking insulin. And once I get that inhalable insulin from Alfresa, I plan on getting it because even if my insurance denies the prescription that my doctor wrote for me, there is a way where you can go on to the website and get a discount. So if I get that insulin, or I should say when, think positive, <laughs> I'll post a video about that and, and how I fare on it. I do think that a lower carbohydrate diet is better for us, but I definitely do not think a ketogenic diet, whether it be a keto vegan diet or a meat keto diet is good for most people. It's lacking nutrients. It's really hard to sustain. I'm not getting enough fruits and vegetables dehydrated even if i'm drinking a lot of water you can see the side effects for keto and it's just not fun <laughs> i absolutely hate it i love fruit i love eating a lot of high carb vegetables like yams and sweet potatoes those have tons of nutrients so my question to you is what are you going to do are you trying to do a keto diet or trying to do really low carb how low carb everyone has their own opinion of what low carb is what I usually try to tell other people is aim for 30 grams of carbs. It's low enough, but not so low. And the other thing that I'm doing, which I've found to be really helpful, is I'm doing intermittent fasting, the 8-16 formula. So what that means is I eat between eight hours, and those eight hours I choose, and then I fast for 16 hours. So I just don't eat anything for 16 hours and that's pretty easy. I'm just usually watching TV or sleeping during that time anyway. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm eating three times a day. So I'm trying to stuff my mouth <laughs> at bigger meals. I'm so used to snacking, you know, four or five times a day. But the whole reason for this is if we are eating several times a day, what we're, our bodies are doing is it's spending time digesting. Also, every time you eat, your body is producing byproducts and that waste has to get eliminated from your body. So it's better to have, eat fewer times so your body could spend more time recovering and helping you become healthier. And what I've found, I've done the, the intermittent fasting for two weeks now, and I have neuropathy and Raynaud's disease, which is caused by the chemicals in the insulin, and my fingers are much, much better now. They're still a little bit swollen, but the swelling goes down a little bit every day, so I know it's working, and it's free. So that's what I'm doing right now. So let me know if you like this video. And what's really interesting is that if you watch a video, YouTube doesn't know you like it. The only way they know you like it is if you click the like button and write in the comments below. So if you found this information to be helpful for other diabetics, help me out by doing those two things and that will push this video out to other type 1 diabetics so they can get to see this video and their recommended list. I also wrote a book, it's called The High Five Diet. It chronicles when I got diabetes, everything that I went through, all the diets I tried, all the torture I put myself through, all these weird <laughs> treatments I did. It's more like a novel but I share with you everything that I learned. I did a lot of research about nutrition and all the things in there help you lower your blood sugar. My blood sugar has been pretty stable for probably 18 years. And I list all the things that I've done which really help 
one thing is you gotta measure your carbs and you gotta count the net carbs and you gotta log everything in. So I am working on another book specifically for type one diabetics. It will be published this year. It will have that worksheet that I showed you, which you will list how much insulin you took after each meal. You would put the time that you ate. You would put all the food that you ate during that time period. And it also has a separate worksheet for exercise. So that way you can see what makes your blood sugar rise more and what makes it drop more. So that will be really helpful. And I've made it really big. It's eight and a half by 11. So if you're like me and you don't want to squint, <laughs> it's nice and large. It's a real nice thick book. So make sure to follow me on YouTube and you can also follow me on my blog. I have all sorts of information on there, recipes and information on nutrition, health and diet. And that is realdiethelp.com. So I hope to see you soon.